Hey all, good evening. Welcome, thanks for coming by. Hello replay viewers. I'm super happy to have you guys here. Let me flip you guys around. Hey there guys, I hope you guys are having a great evening. Hello, thanks for joining guys. We are gonna do something fun tonight. We are gonna learn how to do some basic embroidery stitches. I'm hoping to do this every month or so. Hey there, Kathy, how are you? I know you have your supplies ready to go. <laughs> so for all of you who are new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, and uh, we create lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm also an author and a fabric designer, and we talked about it a little bit last night, and uh, uh, so I thought I'd bring it out for you. This is my book, Sew and Stitch Embroidery. And a lot of the stitches are all in there. Yes, we finished the sweater last night. So every night at 9.30 uh, p.m. Central, I, I'm here. I, this is my relax and craft time where I can just chill and make stuff. All the random little uh, craft projects that I want to do and never really find the time to work on. This is the time. So I hope you guys join me. Um, uh, in the evenings to do this. This is the project that we finished last night. We sewed on all the buttons. It took a few nights for the buttons, but before that we uh, darned, let's see if I can see, darned the elbows, both elbows, and also the cuffs. We did some, just like a big old crochet, kind of a patch, kind of darning. We crocheted and, and caught the thread as we went. So <laughs> I can finally, this is my mom's sweater that she uh, uh, knit. She said in maybe around 2000, we talked to her last night about it, but it is done. It took, it took days and days and days and days and days. Uh, but now we are kind of in the middle of the project. So I thought we'd do another embroidery lesson. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and, so we can get going right away. We um, sometimes cut off around the 50 minute mark. So I'm gonna keep my eye on it. I think we might do a little more of this tomorrow. We'll, we'll get a little creative now that uh, after tonight we'll learn some stitches and tomorrow we'll, we'll play with them a little bit, I think. So I'm gonna flip you guys around. Alrighty, I'm all set up here. Let me just tie you off. All right, I'm gonna roll up my sleeves. Right in the car with my little we'll watch replay. Awesome, thanks Cora, that's, that's awesome. All right, actually guys, I'm gonna take this off. I'm warm already, this sweater. Uh, like I've been saying, it's 100% it's wool and it's so warm. And the kitchen here um, where, I'm, where I'm doing this is actually the warmest area in the house. So I'm a little, little toasty. So here's the book again. I'll just kind of leave it here um, if you guys wanted to see it. It's available, uh, Amazon, and uh, you can find it on my website too, Penguin and Fish. All right, guys, so here is what we're going to do tonight. I will, a different time, talk about transferring designs and uh, all the ways you can do that. Uh, but feel free to ask questions, but I'll, I'll do that another night. I want to focus on the stitches. Oh, I am feeling a little bit better. It's, it's lingering. My cold is lingering, so I have some water nearby, but I think, think we're going to be good. All right, so this is what I'm going to put this in the hoop, and then I'll show you what we're going to do. Have a nice evening, Cora. Thanks for stopping in. I appreciate it. All right, so the inner hoop goes underneath, and then the outer hoop, the one, the, the bigger one with the closure, goes on the front, and you just squish it down over the top. And I am going to just shimmy it around so the design is more in the middle. I got you on all the scopes every morning. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm happy you were able to, to make it live this time, Vanessa. That's awesome. I kind of do that too. I, uh, um, when, I'm, when I get up early enough where I can actually work out, which is my goal, but is rare, <laughs> but I'm hoping not so rare. I, I, I'm really trying to do that. But then I, when I shower in the morning, then I'll, I'll listen to scopes in the shower too. It kind of echoes a little bit in the shower, so it's nice and, nice and loud. I can hear them <laughs> while I shower. <laughs> but that's what I like doing too. Just listen to all the scopes. All right, so I'm tightening this. I'm just kind of pulling all the edges. So it's it's taut, so I can feel it a little bit taut, but not, so it's kind of even. 
Um, but I'm not really stretching it too much. I don't want to stretch the fibers. But okay, so here are the stitches. I'm hoping we can get through tonight. Uh, these are the stitches that I use all the time. Um, you know, really when you embroider, if you know one stitch, you're going to be fine. You're going to be good to go and you can do a ton of really interesting things. And we'll play with that tomorrow night a little bit, I think, just to show you how much you can play. Uh, but tonight we're just going to learn a few of the basic stitches. So uh, we're going to do the running stitch. I just wrote on with pen here. Um, the back stitch, split stitch, uh, chain stitch. We're going to do a single chain, which is similar to the chain stitch. And then the single chain is also kind of a building block to a lazy daisy stitch. Hey, Sam Skibum, that's my other brother. So not, that's my, uh, the one in Alaska who grooms the hills. This is just a muslin. You can use really any fabric that you want. I like a muslin, just kind of like an unbleached muslin because I like the unbleached look. And if you can see the weave, is a little bit larger than uh, um, a quilting weight fabric, which makes it easier to pull the needle through. But a quilting weight fabric works fine as well. This is also, here's another example. You can kind of see the, um, if we can get in focus, you can see how big the weave in is in this too. This is a, this is a, kitch a kitchen towel. So I might do a project with this in a few days. So stick around for that. All right, but I, I do like, um, this is just Rocklon muslin from Joanne Fabrics. Uh, you can just get kind of any muslin. Uh, hey, Stan Skibum, nice to see you. All right, so let's get going. Oh, wait, and then we're going to do, um, so a Lazy Daisy, a single chain stitch is kind of a building block to the Lazy Daisy stitch, which is a cute little flower. And then we'll do French knots. You can put some French knots in a lazy daisy stitch. And then we're going to do some filling stitches too to fill in a space. So there's a satin stitch uh, that we'll do. And then I'll also try and get to the long and short stitch, which I like using for filling a larger space. So we are going to do it all in green tonight. It's holiday time so I thought it'd be cute and I already had it out which is probably the real reason so I'm gonna just get about um, a uh, maybe two 24 inches to you know 36 inches or so piece grab my little scissors so there's a couple ways to do to do this I am um, I like, this is a six strand embroidery floss. So it comes, uh, which just literally means it's made out of six little strands of floss. Oh, green. I like purple and green would be really cute together. I personally only like stitching with three, uh, three strands instead of six. The only reason is that your lines are a little bit thinner. You can uh, stitch with uh, all six and you'll have a nice thick line. You can even stitch with one. So here's here's like one, one strand of floss if I pull out just one versus six. So this will make a very thin line and this will make a very thick line. Oh, it, it matches the, the yarn, the, the thread. I like going somewhere in between, which is the three stitches, the three. So if you see any of my embroidery patterns online, uh, um, all of the images are going to have three. Personal preference. Uh, see what you like. It'll make different thicknesses. Do I ever cross the line? All right. So I'm going to show you how I do this. I'm going to flip you guys around again. All right. Trying to flip you guys. There we go. Sometimes the phone doesn't want to flip. So... When I split the three, the threads into three, I like grabbing, first you just grab your three threads. All right, so now I got three on this side and three on this side. I am letting the rest just dangle. I don't want this to get caught on anything and I do not want it to wrap up around. So make sure it's straight first. And then I'm just gonna slowly pull them apart. I don't want them to uh, twist up on each other and that's why I have it dangling. So just slowly and I just uh, keep 
moving my fingers closer and closer, and these two dangling edges, these, I don't want touching this. Great arm workout. <laughs> yeah, maybe if these were 30 pounds, and then that'd be good. So the trick is not to have these catch this, otherwise you'll have a tangled mess. But yeah, now I have my two, I set one aside, then I just kind of gently let it dangle out, and then this will be my spare. So then the one I just threw down, again, it just let it relax. And then my three strands are ready to go. Uh, there's another way to do this, and um, I can show you that really quick as well. So here is another, another, um, this is pretty long, let me just cut it. Another way to get strands of floss out of here. I just like doing the three, so I split it in half. But you can do this where you grab just one of the strands. I don't usually do this, but it's a lot of people's favorite. So now I just have one of the strands, right? Just pull the strand all the way out and it'll come out perfectly. So I could do that again. This won't knot up at all. It, it's just, it relaxes and then it's good to go. And then one more time for my third. Zoop. And then you can put those three strands together again. So that's another way to get three strands. Both are relatively easy. Uh, this doing it one at a time actually will probably cause less knots than the, trying to pull the three apart. You really can't have them twist up against each other, otherwise it'll get all tangled. But there you go, we have our three ready to go. So I'm gonna flip you back and we'll get embroidering. All right guys, back here. Let me know if the camera flips, the phone flips, and I will, uh, I will try and flip it back. All right, so I got my three strands here. I'm gonna tie one end in a knot. I always start my embroideries with an away knot. And I know if you've been here before, <laughs> you've seen it. I, I use it all the time. Um, and, and I'll tell you what I mean in a sec here. All right, so I'm gonna thread my needle. I use a size five embroidery needle. And you can see the difference between that and just a normal sewing needle. Let's see, here we go. This is a normal sharps uh, standard sewing needle, and then this is a size five embroidery needle. The only difference is the size of the eye. Oop, let's get in focus again. So, focus, it's trying hard. Okay, there we go. See how small this eye, this is the sewing needle compared to the embroidery needle, which is um, nice and big. Let's see if I get back a little bit farther. Well, it doesn't quite want to focus, but uh, Oops, I dropped it. So that's uh, that's the only difference. We want the one with the bigger eye because it'll be easier to thread our, our thread through, our floss. So I'm gonna thread it quickly. So my trick for threading floss, so that was pretty quick. What I do, I don't, I don't wet the end, I don't suck on the end. Um, what I see a lot of people, <laughs> I'm more entertaining than the Republican debate. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> so a lot of people try and uh, hold their thread and hold their needle and really try and, you know, get it in there like that. That is so difficult. What you want to do is hold the end of your thread in between your uh, two fingers here, your thumb and your first finger, just so you can see the tip a little bit there. And now you squish your fingers together so you can't see it at all. Oh, it is much easier. I'm glad you do it that way. So, okay, let's, I want to try to keep it in focus here. So now you can see if I open my fingers up, you can see at the tip of it. And if I squeeze them shut, you can, um, it, it goes away. So we're going to unsqueeze our fingers just so I can see the tip barely. And I'm going to put my, the eye of my needle right over that. Then I'm going to keep opening my fingers and it, it will push the end right through the tip of your, the eye of your needle and then it's threaded. It's so easy. I definitely um, recommend it. Give it a try. It will probably take a few tries, but it, I never do it any other way anymore. It's, it's so simple that way. Okay, we are ready to go. 
So let's start with the running stitch. So here's where the way not comes in. <laughs> awesome, Kathy. I'm so happy that you're doing this with us. I think that's super fun. Uh, we're going to start here and then kind of go down. Uh, I start with an away knot. I'm going to start right here is where I want my first stitch to be. So I'm going to, my away knot is going to be about four inches away. So I want, I want to start four inches away from anywhere that I'm going to stitch here. So I'm going to go start right here. So this will all make sense in a little bit, though the whole away knot. So I'm going to start at the front of my embroidery, go in about four inches away from my start point and pull all the way through. So there's my tiny little away knot right there. So we're gonna let that be for now, but I will, um, so don't forget about it. We're gonna come back to that in a little bit and I'll show you why I really like it. But here's how, where we get started. So I'm gonna pull it up at the beginning of the line for the running stitch. And a running stitch is basically a dashed line so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go a stitch length away and you, that can be however big you want it. I'm gonna, for this, I'm gonna just make it about uh, maybe a hair less than a quarter of an inch stitch, which is a pretty big stitch. It kind of depends on the piece and what you're comfortable with. Uh, give it a, a few ways to try. I can show you what um, different lengths look like if you like to. So that's our first stitch. So now we wanna come up from the back about a stitch length away. Pull it all the way through. So this is our first stitch. We'll get real close here. So here's our second stitch. We'll st same thing about it, go a stitch length away. About a quarter of an inch is what we're doing. Follow your line. Pull it all the way through, then come back up about a stitch length away. And you can kind of see, you see the little uh, end of my needle kind of poking. That's how I find out where my needle is on the back so I can get it right on the line. I'll kind of push up a little bit so you see it right here. And I'll drag it to where the line is and where I want it. And then I know the needle is in the right spot. So that is the running stitch. Front to back a stitch length, then I move a stitch length away and then come back to front. Got it? Awesome. <laughs> so another way to do this, I'm doing the like poking way where I just poke it in and then uh, poke it again and then pull it all the way through. Another way to do this is kind of weaving in and out. So here's how you do that. It's easier to go in, uh, for me, it's easier to go left, so that's why I just turn this around. So I'm gonna just go in a stitch length away and then come out a stitch length away without pulling my thread through. I'm just gonna kind of wave it back and forth along the line. And then when I have a couple stitches, then I'm gonna pull it all the way through. Oops, I cut on the thing. Yes, exactly like quilting. Got a little bunched up here. All right, I'm gonna turn it this way again to pull it through. I'm more coordinated with my right hand. But there you go. So that is another way to do a running stitch, just like quilting. Uh, I personally like going in and then coming out. I feel like um, I have more control on whether it's on the line or not. So I'm gonna do just one last stitch and we'll start the next line. And feel free to ask questions and stuff, guys, too, if, if it's confusing or you miss something. Um, I am more than happy to do something again. All right. For the back stitch, I am going to start, you know, for the running stitch, we started right at the beginning of the line. For a back stitch, I'm going to start a stitch length in. And I'll show you why in a sec. So I'm going to come up about a stitch length in. So the direction of our stitches is gonna go this way, just like how uh, we did the running stitch. But our first, our stitches are gonna go backwards and that's why it's called a back stitch. So I'll show you what I mean. So I've come out a stitch length away from the start 
Now I'm going to go back the opposite direction of what we want to be going. I'm going to go back a length of a stitch. So then I'm right at our beginning spot. Okay, so now I'm going to come up a stitch length away from our starting point right here. Now I'm going to go back again, back to where we started that first stitch, and I'm going to put it right in the same hole. Now another stitch length away. And then back again to that same hole that we started from. So there we go. We have three little back stitches going. I'll do a few more. What I like about the back stitch, it's actually my favorite stitch. I use it in almost exclusively for uh, my outlines. There's something very embroidery feeling about it, I think. Um, I like all the, like, the beaded little points that it makes. Like, you have all these, like, fun little beaded lines versus, like, a very, or a very um, uh, thick... Um, line where you can't tell where the stitches are, that's kind of what we'll do next with the split stitch. Uh, you'll see the difference, but I kind of like this whole beaded look. So uh, this is one of my favorite stitches. So that is the back stitch. Stitches touch in back and don't in running. Yes, so in the running, we're going in and out, in, out in this direction. Yep, here they touch. So it's almost as if um, we put a stitch in between all of these. So we could actually go back into our running stitch and do another running stitch in all the spaces, and it would look just like a back stitch. It would just be constructed differently. But yes, so uh, we did the same length of stitch, so about a quarter inch for both of these. But yes, these are um, staggered, and you can. it's hard to tell because I have... Um, my line here, but I can do a couple um, without a line. I'll go back this way. Then you can kind of see, I'll do the weave in, in and out version because it's kind of quick. There. So this is a, a running stitch where you have that space in the middle. You can kind of see a little bit better where I don't have that my line there. In theory, I would have drawn this with a water-soluble marker or some sort of um, pen that would erase. And then it, um, when the line goes away, it'll look like this, just kind of a dashed line. So a back stitch is kind of like a filled-in dashed line. You can see all the little dashes still. Okay, for a split stitch, which is the next one I have here, that uh, will give you a, a thick line like this. Oh yeah, no problem. Keep the questions coming. Um, the split stitch will give you a thicker line like this, but you won't be able to tell the stitches quite so much. It, it gives it like a nice organic feel. So we'll do one. So we're going to start at the beginning again, right at the beginning of our line. We're going to come up right there. We're going to go a, a stitch length away again. Again, we're doing about a quarter of an inch line. All right, so that's our first part of the stitch. Now we're gonna come up right a little bit away from our um, where we went in here. We're gonna come up a little bit in, like right about here, maybe about halfway. You don't have to quite go halfway, but somewhere in this range. And we're gonna come up right through our thread, splitting the thread in half, hence, you know, the split stitch. So let's see if I can get closer. So that's our first stitch. Now I'm going to come right through it. There. You see how I'm kind of cutting that uh, stitch in half? I'm going to come up right through there. There. See, I split it in half. So that's our first stitch. So for our second stitch, we're going to go a, 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 a stitch length away again. Again, quarter inch in our case. And again, we're going to come up through 
a little ways from our uh, where we just put it in, splitting that stitch right in half. Obviously, that's easier when you're using an even length or an even um, number of uh, floss threads. You know, we're doing three, so there'll be one, one thread on one side and two on the other, but that's okay. So I'm just going to do a few more. So a stitch length away. Coming up right through the stitches. So again, going a little ways back, coming up right through the stitches. So here's what this looks like. You can still see the stitches. Yeah, it definitely makes a nice, thick line. So here's the difference. See how here you can see all the like little beads of the stitches. I like calling them beads, but you know, these little dashes, you can see each stitch here in the split stitch. It kind of blends together. I think it gives it a really kind of pretty organic line. Uh, this would be really pretty for a stem of a flower. Um, just cause it is, it just looks like one solid block of line, which is kind of fun. However, again, I prefer the back stitch cause, just because I do like that stitchy look. I think it does. It, it reads as embroidery to me a little bit more. I, I, I just like seeing the stitches. But this, again, if you want a really, you know, beautiful, organic-y, flowery type thing, it might be, it might be great. Um, but yeah, that's, well, that's what's so fun about embroidery is that there's so many different looks um, that you can use to achieve something. And I just kind of really love that. All right, I think I have enough thread here yet that um, we can do the, the chain stitch. And, and so those are all kind of our uh, basic line stitches. And there are plenty more, and we can do more later. But these are the ones that I tend to use pretty often. Um, and then you can see them all next to each other, which is kind of fun. All right, I'm going to just finish this stitch off by um, doing the one stitch to the back. There, that's, that's the rest of our our split stitch. All right, chain stitch. I'm going to come up right at the beginning again. Beginning of our line. All right. I'm going to kind of rearrange a little bit here. It's easier for me to do a chain stitch away from me. So I'm going to point the line away from me. I, I like having my thumb handy for this too. So for a chain stitch, we are going to make a little loop with our floss. So you can kind of see I got this loop going here. So I'm gonna hold down the side of that loop just so I can keep it in place with my thumb. Now I'm gonna put the needle back in the exact hole that I just made, that I just came out of at the beginning. All right, and I'm not gonna pull it through all the way. I wanna keep, I wanna keep my little loop here. Now I'm going to come up a stitch length away. We're doing a quarter of an inch about, a little less than a quarter of an inch. So here's my loop. I'm going to come up right through the loop. And then as I pull it tight, where I came up, it kind of catches that loop. So now we have like a little chain. This is our first chain stitch here. So let's do it again. I'm gonna grab it with my thumb. So I got this loop going. Gonna go in right where I came out. So in this case, I'm going into the center of that loop again. Coming up about a stitch length away. I know this one is so pretty. So I'm going right in the center of the loop and then pulling, and then the, my thread is catching that loop as I pull it tight. So there we go, we got two little chains. And it looks like a chain. I mean, what the nice thing about, uh, about uh, embroidery is that's very literal. Like this is literally a back stitch. We're going back first. This we're literally splitting the stitch in half and this we are making something that looks like a chain. <laughs> so let's do a couple more. Again, I'm holding that with my thumb just to keep that loop in place. Then coming back up through the center of that loop about a stitch length away. And then pulling it tight. 
So you can see as you get going, you got your thumb doing its thing over here. Stitch length away. There we go. So when you're done with uh, your row, like let's say this is the end of my row, I need to anchor this last stitch down somehow. So I'm gonna get my stitch tight and then I'm going to jump over the end of that loop. So you can see I'm on the inside of this loop here. I'm gonna jump over this part and make a teeny tiny stitch right on the other side of that loop. It's called an anchor stitch because you're anchoring um, that loop down. So there we go. See, now we're holding it down. So there we go. That is uh, how we end a chain stitch, a line of chain stitches. And you know, this is actually great if you want to switch directions too. So let's say I want to start going down uh, at a 90 degree angle. Uh, it's really helpful to make that anchor stitch at, the, at your point to have a nice point. And then I'll just start my next row going down. So I'll come up on the inside of that loop again. So see, I'm on the inside of my loop. Make my loop here. I'm gonna go down now. Here, again, I like going the opposite direction. So we're gonna just do a few chain stitches going down. So there's one. How are you doing this evening? Thanks everyone for um, hanging with me here. This is fun uh, uh, to do every once in a while, I think. It's kind of a, this will be like the in-between project sort of thing that we do. And we can, um, we'll learn some other stitches too. But here, so I did, uh, I did a little wonky, but you can see I anchored this stitch down and then I started a little in and went straight down. So now I'm, I have a better 90 degree angle than I would have if I um, wouldn't do this anchor. This stitch would have been flopping over and I, it would have ended up more curvy. So it's nice to anchor a stitch down um, while at a corner too. All right, so now I gotta put the little anchor here to finish this little row. So you use this as an outline. Yeah, okay, how do you know which outline stitch to use? It is completely up to you. So here, here's um, what we can see. It really depends on what you want your, your uh, design to look like. If you want a thicker line, that has this chain look, use that. Um, if you want a really thinner, a thin line, you can use a back stitch, or you could use a back stitch with uh, maybe one strand of thread if you wanted it even thinner. A back stitch, again, has this beadier look to it than a split stitch, which is kind of one solid line. And this has a beady look too, uh, but it's it's thicker than the, the back stitch. So it's really up to you um, how you want your piece to look. Uh, so I mean, and really, if all you know is the back stitch, you're gonna be able to complete any piece that you have. Cause I could actually, these are all outline stitches, but I could actually turn them into fill stitches just by, like, look at this, I will, um, I'll turn this so no rules exactly. That is what's so fun about embroidery. Um, it's really up to you. So I'm gonna make this split stitch into a fill stitch really quickly by, by just stitching really close to, I'm doing more split stitches here, just really quickly. I'm gonna do a couple split stitches right next to the split stitches I just did. And you'll see it's starting to, uh, now it's even thicker, right? And so if I do another row right next to it, I mean, soon we'll be filling in a whole space. So, and this is just a split stitches. Yeah, this is, um, you know, a stitch in theory meant for outlining, but you just put a bunch next to each other and all of a sudden um, you've filled in a shape and each stitch will give its own little texture. Uh, which is so fun. That's why it's fun to experiment. I mean, you can fill a whole space with chain stitches too. So here, look at look at that. I just um, 
filled in this space. And look, it looks like little fur or hairs. You can kind of tell a direction to it, but um, it's just kind of, it's almost like a little knit sweater. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if you're doing filling in a little sweater shape, I mean, this would even look more like a knit sweater um, with all these little chains. So, I mean, it's really, it's really playful. So no rules exactly. You can, um, you can do just tons of stuff with knowing hardly anything. I mean, really, I could have done a whole thing with the, just the split stitches, filled stuff in, done outlines, done little, you know, specks here and there of just a split stitch on its own. Uh, there's just a lot of potential, right? And that's, that's what's so fun. So, okay, I'm going to finish off my thread because I am, uh, it's getting pretty short. And then that's when we're going to come back to the way knot. And then I will move on to these other stitches. I'm going to just check the time yet. Okay, we're good. We have about 15 minutes, I think, before I might start cutting out. So here's my back. I have about this much thread, maybe four or five inches left. So I don't ever tie a knot on the back of my embroidery. Because I think it can leave a little bump on the front. And uh, if you're doing something that's going to be washed a lot, like a tea towel, uh, Weaving in the ends is actually stronger than tying a knot. So here's how you weave in the ends. With um, this little length left, I'm going to just go in and out of a few stitches on the back of my embroidery. Uh-oh, am I cutting out for you? Okay, well, here, maybe I'm just moving a little fast. It shouldn't be cutting out quite yet, guys. So why don't I just sit here for a little? Is it... Is it going okay again? How are we doing? Um, so if we do cut out, no, is it is it bad? Really choppy, okay. Why don't I, uh, some weird sound. Okay guys, I am gonna cut out and come back in. How about that, all right? So let's do that. I will be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out guys and come back in because I do wanna do this with you guys um, and I don't want it to be too weird. So, all right, I will be right back. 